Hi, I'm Sam from Griot's Garage, and today we're going to do some paint correction on this Alfa Romeo Spider. We have a plain black single stage finish that's been resprayed, and let's just say that the respray has a little bit to be desired. We've got quite a few dirt and dust nibs on the deck lid, as well as uh, some pretty drastic inconsistency in the, the orange peel and the, the level of the finish. So we're going to break out our new Boss finishing papers and see what we can do to improve that and uh, get a nice uniform finish out of it. We'll follow up with our Boss creams and Boss orbitals. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the prep involved for wet sanding and some of the precautions that need to be taken before you get started. Uh, this deck lid has been, been thoroughly prepped. We've stripped the surface of all waxes, silicones, and sealants. Uh, we then decontaminated the surface using our uh, surface prep mitts and then we followed that with another strip process using ice, isopropyl alcohol to remove any silicone that may have been left behind in the speed shine. So now we have a, a fresh bare surface that we're ready to, to get started wet sanding on. Wet sanding is not something that you want to just pick up and get after it on your own vehicles if you've never done it before and we definitely recommend professional experience or professional advice if you're going to take on a project like this. Um, you know, with random orbital and rotary polishing, you're removing paint. Uh, with, you know, random orbitals, you're removing it at a slower level than you are with rotary. And wet sanding, you're removing paint significantly faster than you are with a rotary tool. So you do always want to measure the paint, ideally, prior to wet sanding, specifically on a, on a respray, uh, where not, you know, the whole vehicle wasn't repainted, um, and we don't know, you know, what type of paint the painter used and how many coats he did and things like that. So we always want to measure the paint first. We've done that and we've determined that there is enough film on this finish to go ahead and, and do some minor wet sanding. Since we're working with a respray and we only want to go after some of these minor dirt nibs and level out a little bit of the uh, orange peel, we're not going to go too aggressive here. Being that this is single stage and it's a softer finish, uh, we're going to start around 2000 grit. Uh, we carry grits from 800 all the way up to 3,000. Um, so you have a wide range for, for various jobs, whether you're you know, blocking and wet sanding a, a freshly repainted hot rod, or whether you're doing uh, random isolated defect removal and an OEM clear coat, um, or cleaning up a, a, a less than ideal respray on a, on a vehicle like this one. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and get started with our 2,000 grit. Uh, we've got it pre-soaked in our ultimate wash bucket. Um, our wash buckets are awesome for storing your sandpaper. And then you have your shelf up top, which is great for keeping your blocks and any of your sanding tools dry and out of the, out of the messy water. Um, and you can also keep your sandpaper stored in water for um, you know, weeks at a time. You just want to make sure that you are switching the water out so that it's not getting moldy. Um, and things like that, but it is okay. Uh, our Nick and Brand paper can stay in water for extended periods of time without, without any issues. Here I've got a spray bottle of water. It does have a, a drop or two of our super concentrated car wash that is strictly a, a soap. There's no silicones or additives in it. Um, so this is gonna give us a little better lubricity on the surface without impacting the, the sanding process. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and, and spray the surface. And I'm also gonna spray my paper. It's very important that throughout the process, you're going to flush your paper while you're sanding. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started here. You'll notice that you know, I want to hold the sanding block as flat as possible. You want as even pressure as possible over the finish. And I'm going to work in really short strokes going in a diagonal motion. So we'll go ahead and start. All right, so it's important during the process that you're observing the slurry coming off the paint. Normally on clear coat, it'll be very noticeable because it'll be a, a milky white slurry coming off. Uh, since this is single stage black, we're not getting any milky white, it's milky black. So it's a little more difficult to see, um, but you can see the color in the water as it runs off. So we know the sandpaper is working as it should. I'm not using really much pressure here at all, just the weight of my hand. Nice and even pressure applied, short strokes going in diagonal direction. And then for the next sanding step, 
we'll move up to 2500 grit and we'll work in the opposite diagonal direction. The reason for that is so that you can tell that you're removing your previous sand scratches effectively uh, when you're alternating directions. If you weren't alternating directions, you wouldn't have a way to, to tell whether or not you were effectively removing those sand scratches. So keep working on this little quarter. Almost through with the 2000 grit process here, and then we'll move to the next section using the same grit. So it's also important when you're wet sanding to frequently flush your paper using your spray bottle, making sure that it's not being clogged up with clear coat or in this case, single stage paint. And another important thing to note is you always want to be careful of your edges. Edges are almost always much thinner than the, than the inner portions of a panel. So I'm kind of using my pinky here to, to stay away from that edge um, and not, not hit it quite as hard as I'm hitting the rest of the panel. Because um, gonna be much, you're gonna be much more likely to burn paint on an edge or a, a high contour um, because of gravity when the car is being painted, there's less paint settling on those areas. Um, so you have a, a thinner film build. All right, so we finished with the 2000 grit on this small section here. Um, this was about three to four passes um, over the entire section with that paper. And this is what you want it to look like. So if you've never seen this before, um, it, it probably doesn't look good to you. But uh, you want this nice, even, kind of opaque matte finish um, with your sand scratches visible. Um, so you might may or may not be able to see this in the video, but all my sand scratches are going in this diagonal direction, you know, facing the front passenger corner of the car. So when I, when I finish the whole deck lid with 2000 grit going in that direction, I'm then going to switch to 2500 going in the opposite direction, moving diagonally towards the driver corner of the car. That will allow me to, to determine that I'm effectively removing these 2000 grit sand scratches because as long as I don't see any diagonal scratches going that way. Once I'm done with the next step, I know that I've, I've done enough sanding, done a thorough enough job, and I'm ready to, ready to polish. So now we're through with the 2000 grit step, finished out the whole deck lid with, with that grit, and now we're going to move up to 2500 grit to finish it out. So with 2500 grit, since the previous step we were sanding in this direction, 2500 I'm going to sand in this direction, and that will allow us to see whether we're fully removing the 2000 grit sand scratches um, or not, so we know when to stop. Normally your, your first step in sanding is going to take much longer than your subsequent steps, so being that I did three to four passes with the 2000 grit step, I should be in about two to three pass range with the uh, 2500 grit step. So we'll go ahead and get going. We'll start in the section that I started on last time. Got 2500 on the block. And this time we're going to work towards the front driver corner of the car. For the most part, this process is going to be the exact same. It's just going to take a little bit less time. All right, so we have the whole surface sanded now, and we finished out our 2500 grit step, have a nice uniform finish. Um, so now we're going to polish out these sand scratches, and the objective isn't only to bring uniform gloss back, but to remove 100% of these sand scratches it can be common when you're removing sand scratches 
that it looks like they're all coming out because you get a nice gloss when in reality there's still scratches underneath that gloss. So you always want to make sure and check it thoroughly with light, make sure that there aren't any scratches left behind. There's many ways to remove these sand scratches. You could start with a rotary, you could start with a random orbital. Uh, we're going to use a one-step process since this paint is relatively soft and we sanded it out to 2500 grit. We're going to hit it with our fast correcting cream on our fast correcting white foam pad so that we don't have to do a subsequent step to remove any hologramming that a rotary may put in or haze that a microfiber pad may put in. All right, so we finished up, got it all polished out, removed all of the 2500 grit sand scratches that we put in there. And it's a pretty drastic before and after from, from where we started. So the paint is much flatter. We were able to remove a lot of those orange peel inconsistencies and there are no longer any dirt nibs in the finish. Um, so it's much flatter, more uniform. Uh, definitely polishing brought some gloss out of it. Uh, so there's tons of, of techniques and, and tips and tricks involving wet sanding that we didn't go over in this video. Um, it is a very technical process and something that we do only recommend doing with professional advice or professional experience. Um, but it, it can do some pretty impressive stuff, um, all that said. So we were able to remove defects that you'd never be able to remove with a random orbital in a pretty reasonable amount of time. It did definitely require some, some elbow grease and some effort, um, but for the time spent, you know, compared to the results we got, I would say that it was definitely worth it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. We'd be happy to help. For more information, visit us at griotsgarage.com. And as always, have fun in your garage.